Hello and welcome back to LG Custom Lures and today I am making a five and a half inch multi-jointed swim bait. Why five and a half inches you might be asking? And to be honest I don't really have an explanation. I just drew out the design and it seemed like the right size so we're gonna roll with it. I transfer the bait profile to a block of poplar wood and I cut it out on my bandsaw. I like poplar wood because it's a practical wood choice for these kinds of projects due to it being easy to find, lightweight, inexpensive, and easy to carve. For reference, on the Jenka hardness scale, it scores about half as hard as walnut wood, 20% softer than Douglas fir, and about 25% harder than basswood, making it a nice middle ground. If you aren't a woodworking nerd like me, that probably means nothing to you and you can go ahead and disregard that, but if you are a woodworking nerd, well, you're not gonna wanna miss out on my next project, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I use the bench sander to get closer to my profile outline. I make a few markings on the lure blank to guide myself in the next step, to sculpt the top and bottom profile with the bench sander. I chamfer the edges of the lure, carving into the body of the wood with my utility knife. And then I transfer my carving details from my original sketch to the lure. I carve these details into the bait carefully and I begin to sand the carvings into a smooth and uniform body. It's right back to the bandsaw to cut a slot into the bait to fit the soft plastic tail fin. And now I saw the bait into four separate pieces. This is a lot of joints to fit into a bait this size and at this point I'm a bit nervous as to whether or not this will work out. Ultimately, making this bait was mostly an exercise in making this style of swim bait joint, and I like challenging myself with these builds. And to make a bait with so much hardware crammed into it seemed like a worthy challenge. I align these joints with some pins, marking the locations where the joint will meet. I twist up some stainless wire for hook hangers and the joint hardware. I have a few different gauges and types of stainless wire that I use for this hardware, but I tend to use this one the most, which is a 0.051 inch stainless safety wire. It seems to have a nice blend of strength and workability. I drill out the locations where this hardware is going and I test fit each twisted wire. I grab my Dremel with a tiny little burr bit and I get to hogging out these joint pockets. This is done using a few marks I made ahead of time, but, but test fitting the bait together with the joint hardware tells me which areas need some more material removed.
In a swim bait joint like this, you really don't want the wood and the stainless steel to be contacting each other too much as that will wear away the wood prematurely and potentially weaken the joint's strength. I drill out the holes for the joint pins, and for the joint pins I typically use segments of thicker and stiffer stainless wire. This is also handy because it comes in straight segments rather than a coil that I would have to straighten out myself. Once I like the fitment of the joint hardware and I test out the articulation of the joints, it's time to glue it all in place using some thick super glue. Super glue is pretty great for this as it cures fast and is strong. If you make lures and use super glue for this, I recommend a thicker super glue as it gives you more time to thread this hardware in place before it cures. I have definitely used thin super glue before and, and it didn't work out as the glue cured before I was done threading the hardware in. Overall I'm satisfied with the challenge of fitting all these joints together on this bait and I really like the articulation they give the lure. I mark some locations for lead holes along the bottom of the bait. I place these locations where they're unobstructed and these are only on the first two segments of the lure. At this point, all the joint segments on the bait are getting a little confusing and I accidentally flipped the second segment over and drilled two quarter inch lead holes on the top of the lure. That's no big deal though. I can fix this problem later. I use my best guesstimate to weight the bait, keeping the majority of the weight shifted forward to give the bait the correct action. This bait didn't require all that much lead given the volume of wood, and that's likely due to the mass of the stainless steel hardware used in it. I am going to plug the accidental holes in the top of the bait with the hardwood dowel, so I test fit the dowel and I mark a cut line before cutting it to size. I glue the dowels into place and I cap the lead holes with some super glue and baking soda. If you don't already know this trick, putting a thin super glue over some baking soda makes the super glue flash harden and it increases the surface area of the bond, making it stronger. It is great in this circumstance because I can instantly start sanding and filing the area smooth and I have the peace of mind that the lead won't be coming out of this bait anytime soon. I soak the bait in the same thin super glue to seal the wood from moisture and to increase the strength of the wood fibers. I finish up some last minute preparations to get the hooks onto the bait, and it's time to see how good my weight guesstimation was. The sink rate is very close to where I want it. Of course I will be adding weight in the form of clear coat and paint layers, so I will need to remove a little bit of lead just to make sure that we have the correct rate of fall in the water. 
I seal those lead holes back up, and it's time for the most dreaded part of any build, the finished sanding. It isn't enjoyable for me, but who says it can't be enjoyable for you? How about a sanding montage? I clean the surface of the bait before applying my favorite rattle can primer. Once the primer is dry, I hit it with some fine grit sandpaper to remove the matte finish left behind and to add a little bit of luster to the paint layers that will be applied next. I set up my paint booth and it's time to get to slinging some paint. I start with a sealant over the primer and I begin layering the white paint on the belly followed by some black paint on the back of the lure. And this is the base coat for some chrome paint that I will be applying next, which gives the bait superb shine. I keep layering details utilizing different stencils and paint colors. Any ideas as to what this paint scheme might be? If you guessed Shad, then I guess you're somewhat correct? And to be honest, I don't really know exactly what I'm painting at this point. My only aim is for it to be Baitfish-esque. And I think I achieved that goal, but what do you think? These golden eyes really round out the overall look of the paint scheme. I wasn't too sure how I felt overall about the paint scheme until I glued them on. I pre-warmed my clear coat epoxy by soaking the bottles in some warm water and it's time to get to mixing. It's just two parts, equal parts by weight, and you slap it on there with the disposable paintbrush, and it's really not more complicated than that. But actually, it's one of the most challenging and stressful parts of the build. The smallest mistake here can make the bait look terrible, or much worse, it could ruin the whole thing. For this bait, I was a little slow with mixing the epoxy, and it started to thicken up early on me. I had to use heat from a torch and a heat gun to prolong my work time with the epoxy to get the whole thing clear coated with one mix. Let me know in the comments below if you would like to see a full length video detailing my clear coating process. 24 hours later. I assemble the bait and then I realize that I have no more soft plastic tails left so I break out the silicone tail fin mold and some soft plastic. I mix up some black using some chopped up recycled soft plastic and some new soft plastic, and I pour a few tails.
I install the new tail and the hooks, and this bait is done. Just take a look at this thing. The rate of fall on this bait is perfect for my taste. It's not too fast and it's not too slow. I really like how it has both a subtle S action at a slow reel and a much more aggressive S action at a full burn. The bait also has a killer hunting action where the head swings back and forth and a bit of an erratic twitching action. Definitely one of my favorite multi-joint swim baits that I have made to date. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you enjoyed it and you would like to see more projects, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up. I will see you on the next project.